reaching all the way back to 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition. Here is your host of Fate Radio, Kat Hobson. Good evening and welcome to Paranormal Experience Radio. I am hosting Fate Magazine tonight and I am so excited to have you here. I am, first of all, wanting to say that, you know, it's not enough just to say pray for these poor people who are here, for these poor people who are there. We need to be praying for our nation as a whole. I think that we have gotten ourselves into such a position that we are, we are really needing something. You know, it's not a he said, she said, it's not a a generational thing, it's not a political party thing. This is just a plain old fashioned human thing because we have got so much happening. We've got people who are acting like idiots with, with bomb things being mailed out. We have got people who are going out again and shooting places up. People who were there to celebrate their religion. And, you know, enough already. Be the person that you want to be walking down the street next to. Don't be the person who is frightening and scary. And, you know, if you're having issues, seek help. If you have a drug issue, seek help. Take ownership of that and fix yourself. And that being said... I am lucky enough tonight to be able to welcome two men that I admire greatly. I have spoken with them in the past. I am fortunate enough to have participated with a contest that they did relevant to paranormal evidence. These are men who have different reasons for being in the paranormal field, and they found each other, they work well together, and they kind of have a vision for some different ways of interacting with investigations and with spirits. They're interesting. They're amazing. Greg is the founder of Paranormal Nights, and together, Greg and Noah are the founders of Supernatural and Paranormal University, which is a fantastic group. And gentlemen, welcome to Fate Radio. Thank you for being here. Thank you. You're very welcome, Kat. It's good talking to you. Well, it's been a while, hadn't it? Yes, it has. So, I know that we have been, I guess it's been since March. March that we did the contest, which Tony Rathman won. And, you know, I know that things didn't quite work out with Let's Talk Radio, and that was tragic for Tony. But you know what? He is so busy now. He has a new haunted location. And he is slamming and jamming. And he <laughs> he would not have time to do his show anyway. But, you know, I thought it was so great that y'all even set this evidence contest up. Because it was $5 for a submission. And all of that was going into a prize pool with other things being donated. And... It was just a great idea. Which one of you came up with that? Uh, it was kind of a combination. Uh, we talked about some trying to create some different ways to uh, spark a conversation to get everybody unified in one direction, uh, to start sharing evidence. So each group kind of does things their own different way. There's no uniform across the board level of standardized investigation techniques. Uh, even if you could say there is, they're still different because this group uses a different DVR system with different camera resolution, etc. So we wanted to try to get a conversation going where everybody could agree to a basic standardized level of investigation techniques using the same equipment so that we could expand from that and begin, really begin gathering some increasingly more documented proof of the paranormal so that we can get this to become an accredited science eventually um, and to where it's – because we're on a tipping point with the field right now. It's 
at the point where it's either going to evolve or it's going back into the laughing stock that people used to believe it was. And it's all comes down to how people treat it and react and experiment and portray themselves as investigators. So we came up with the idea for the contest so that people would start sharing their evidence so that we can get that conversation going and move from. I apologize for that. I appear to have had a little bit of a break in service, but we're back. You know, I think that that standard of measurement, you're not going to have anything without that. And that is one of my favorite things that y'all have delved into is trying to ascertain what equipment. But people seem to be very hesitant to share their methodologies, even of how they're using equipment. And so much of the equipment really is not well understood by the operators. They don't know, or there are a lot of people who don't know what EMF is. If there's a cold spot, does that mean that a spirit has just left? And, you know, use the energy that was there and then moved on. There's so many possibilities out there. Are people seeming to be more open than they were even a few months ago about sharing some of this information? What are you seeing? Uh, Unfortunately not, honestly. I mean, people are still having too many of their egos in the way and not looking at the bigger picture. The bigger picture isn't about you. It isn't about me. It isn't about Noah. It's about finding proof of the paranormal, documenting it, understanding it, and helping people cope and understand with it. And we can't do that if people aren't willing to help evolve the field and quit worrying about themselves. It's me, me, me. I'm getting a TV show from this piece of evidence, or I want this, or I want that. And unfortunately, that's the problem. Too many people are worried. But also, unfortunately, those are not realistic expectations. So Agreed. They're, so they're hiding or protecting their methods when they could actually be the pioneers in the field, moving it into something much more important and, quite honestly, something that would pay much better than a reality television show. Absolutely. What do you see as your motivation for stepping up to do this? Our motivation has always been based in in service, just being there to help. And if this idea, as grand as it is, is something that can not only help the field itself, but help individuals and families and locations that, you know, have had good, bad, and different just events that are plaguing them in a way, if this leads to the slightest bit of assistance to the world around us, then we've achieved what our original goal was. You know, just that sense of serving one another, which seems to be so lost in most people's actions these days. You know, it's not entirely, though, because I have a lot of friends who I work with, who I've interviewed over time, who I just follow through the course of their work, who really seem to just be doing this because they enjoy doing it. They don't really care about about their level of attention or their level of, you know, quote, you know, I'm doing hand quotes here, fame. But somebody posted a thing on Facebook the other day that said if if you're famous on Facebook, it's kind of like, you know, being famous, I forget, like in your bathtub or something. I don't know. But, you know, it's, it's not. However, they do that, I would agree. <laughs> it's just, you know, but but it is something that matters so much because I know a lot of people, a lot of people like y'all, like my friend Frank Lee, like Boyd Auerbach, like, you know, I could go by group, by group, by group. There's so many people in the field who do want this to become an accredited science, who want this to be something different you know, to turn it into more of a parapsychology program like Lloyd has, or, you know, I have a friend who teaches paranormal studies on a collegiate level. There are people out there who are striving to do this, and it doesn't seem that the community as a whole is supporting this. No, it certainly does not. How do you propose... 
Go ahead. We've spoken about it before. It's, when you speak to somebody on an individual basis, you know, they'll tell you that story of that time that something went bump in the night, that that thing they knew they were talking to when they were a kid. But so often if they're in a group or around others, it was different and they had an explanation for it. And I'm not saying that's the case all the time, but I mean, I go back to if, if you can explain scientific energy theorem, you, string theory, just more, more advanced things, whether you're science-based or theologically based, then you're saying paranormal science is real. Yes. But you can actually verbalize those words. So. Yeah, I don't understand that either. I think that so many people are doing such fantastic things that there's got to be a way to bring it together. But I'll tell you, you know, not everybody is aware of how y'all came to be involved in the paranormal. Could you, Greg, could you go first and explain some of that for you? Yeah, it kind of started with me as a, as a kid. I had some experiences when living with my grandfather that I couldn't explain. And when I went to different religious leaders, um, they all kind of looked at me like I should be put in a straitjacket. And, you know, they really had no answers for me. For a long time, I felt really um, abandoned by them. But then as more and more I got into uh, the field of paranormal research, I learned that uh, it, it's not their fault. They have no knowledge or they're not experienced or I've gone through the situations that we have now to understand what's going on. Or they don't have the training from like a higher authority on dealing with these situations. Um, so it's kind of like, for example, you know, going to a local church and talking to them and they don't know, but everyone above them knows. So it's just uh, passing on to the knowledge and experience is a big factor that is really kind of fitting. But after dealing with this, you know, back in the uh, late 90s, the Internet was just kind of really taken off. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of information on the Internet about this subject. So the only thing I could really find was mainly based on um, local libraries, uh, school libraries. So I got every book that I could find that involved the paranormal or ghosts or explaining, you know, basic physics and everything to try to get a good understanding of what was going on and kind of evolved from there. Uh, I moved to Ohio in 2002 and started pretty much investigating ever since. Well, and you've done a really good job. And I noticed that while there's not a overwhelming amount of evidence posted and such, you share what you have on your Facebook even. You know, it's a really great thing. People share, but you'll actually discuss what was going on and how you got it. Right, and that's that's the whole ultimate goal because with like, the Supernatural Paranormal University, uh, there may be a local group in your hometown somewhere that just capturing phenomenal evidence, you know, some of the best paranormal evidence ever found, but yet they're not sharing. They're not sharing their technique of how they do that. And part of that is ego. Part of that is fear of repercussions from what could happen from that um, or ridicule. Cause when you get some really good evidence, a lot of people tend to think that you have fake evidence. Oh, CGI which is really or good. made that up. I know, right. I get tired so of the it's CGI. kind of a sword. Yeah. It's a, it's a double-edged sword when you actually have the courage and guts to come out and say, look at this phenomenal paranormal evidence that's captured, and you don't have the backbone to kind of stick with it and stand up to the ridicule that you could potentially get. Well, you know, the people that do share are the people who are strong enough not to really give a rip what other people's opinions are. Right. They just bring forth the evidence, and this is what I have like it or mock it this is still what i have i see people do that all the time and i don't understand yeah. i guess why it's a, a hardship there's some great stuff out there absolutely and